Hello and welcome. I'm Tiffany Barron, president of Bob Proctor's Chairman's Club, and I want to talk to you today about creating your own economy. I want to talk to you about money because it is a very fascinating subject, yet so misunderstood by many people. You see, how often do you think about money? And when you think about it, how do you feel? Do you feel worried, stressed out, confused, or do you love it? Do you just have so much fun thinking of different ways and ideas to earn money? Because we do. You know, I like how Bob Proctor put it. He says, we are born rich. But you see, I was born and then I was raised to believe that you had to follow an orthodox path and get a job and then you would earn a lot of money. And so I did. I got a very good education and I did have a very good job, but yet I wasn't earning the amount of money that I wanted to be earning. You see, someone else put a cap on my income. Someone else was telling me where to be Monday through Friday, nine to five. You know, they would tell me when to go home. And I got to the point where I became very dissatisfied with that. And I thought there has to be a better way. And that's when I met Bob Proctor and I became a very serious student of his teachings. Now, Bob comes from a very different background, no formal education, no formal business experience, and yet we both earn a lot of money. Now, we do have one thing in common. We both fell in love with the idea called the Chairman's Club. And you see, we work together. Competition is out, cooperation is in. Let me ask you, how much money would you like to be earning? Do you wanna be earning a lot more money? Do you want time and money freedom? To be able to do whatever you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. If you answered yes to any of those questions, then go ahead and sit back, relax, and open that beautiful mind of yours as we listen to Bob Proctor. Create your own economy. It's a cool idea, isn't it? How would you like to really truly be able to create your own economy? In other words, sit down and decide exactly what you want to earn and then go ahead and do it without killing yourself. Now, that may sound like a fantasy, it may sound like a bit of a wild dream, but do you know that there's a lot of people living that way? I've been living that way now most of my adult life. Do you know, only 1% of our population earns 96% of all the money that's being earned. It's almost absurd when you sit and take a look at it. And then if you listen to the media, it'll bury you today. All the bad news, the television, the radio, the newspaper, it sounds like the whole world's falling apart financially, but I'm gonna tell you something, it's not. Do you know that there's a few people sit down, they'll take a pen, they'll write down a figure, and then they activate their marvelous mind and they go out and they earn it. And that's what I'm suggesting you can do. In fact, that's what this film is about. We wanna to talk to you about creating your own economy. Do you know, for the last 40 years, I've traveled all over the world showing people how to live the way they want. And you start living the way you want to live by no longer living the way you don't want to live. Isn't that strange? Most people spend their entire life doing what they really don't like doing. Now, money is a funny subject. You start talking to most people about money, they become defensive. And that's because they haven't got any. And that's because it's such a personal subject, they don't want to talk about it. But I want to ask you a question. If you had a loved one that came to you and asked, where would they go to substantially improve their ability to earn money? Where would you send them? Do you know, most people don't know. They really don't know. You could go to the most prestigious universities in the world. You go to Oxford, Harvard. It doesn't matter where you go. They don't teach people how to earn money. We brainstorm and we bring together economists. Most economists are broke. Let me ask you a couple more questions. I think these questions demand an answer. Why do so many absolutely brilliant people end up broke. I don't know about you, but when I was raised as a little boy, I was raised with the idea that if you're gonna earn a lot of money, you've gotta be really smart. Let me let you in on a secret. I went to high school for about three months. When I was 26, somebody put a book in my hand, and like that, my income went from 4,000 to 175, then were over a million. I had no business experience, I had no formal education, but I was earning a lot of money. And you know what that did? That caused me to start to ask questions about money. Let me ask you a question. Why do some people who are functionally illiterate 
they can neither read nor write, earn millions. Do you know that you could wander up and down the street in any city in the world and stop one person after another and ask them, how do you earn money? They'll say, well, you go to work. Do you know that working is the very worst way to earn money? Why is it that we can teach a child multiple languages, we can teach them to read before they can talk, and yet we never teach them how to earn money? Do you know that money impacts almost every aspect of your life? Now, if you don't have any, it's a negative impact. And if you have lots of it, it's a very positive impact. One of the companies that I started is called the Chairman's Club. And the Chairman's Club is an organization where wealth is a predictable result. And we bring people from all over the world to work together in harmony to help each other. See, the world is a very competitive place, but I always look at it that professionals create, amateurs compete. And so we bring people together and we get them working on a concept where they help each other. We have a purpose in the Chairman's Club, and it's a good one. The purpose is to cultivate and maintain a creative, prosperous environment that encourages people to set up sources of income, to work together in harmony. We'll have people maybe from Singapore working with somebody from Australia and somebody else from America. We have people in maybe Barcelona working with somebody in Canada and in the UK. And we bring them together in this virtual organization. See, if you can go online, you can become very wealthy. See, I think everyone wants freedom. Now, we're born free. It's just that we're then put in a cage moments after we're born. But everybody does want freedom. I think they want time and money freedom. I don't think people like to be restricted with time or money. And you know, in the Chairman's Club, we offer people both time and money freedom. And you'll be absolutely amazed how much free time you have when you never have to think about money. You see, our world is changing, and it's changing at a very rapid clip. The world's not getting bigger. If you look, the world is getting smaller, a lot smaller. You're not a long way away from anywhere today. You're only hours away. And you know that you can have business all over the world as a member of the Germans Club. Napoleon Hill is a man that I have studied now for close to 50 years. Andrew Carnegie was Napoleon Hill's mentor. Andrew Carnegie was at one time the wealthiest man in the world. He spent half his life earning money and the other half giving it away. And he pointed out that the accumulation of great wealth calls for power. And he says power is acquired through highly organized and intelligently directed specialized knowledge. But, he said, the person who accumulates the fortune doesn't have to be the one that has the knowledge. I didn't realize what I had learned. I was getting people to work for me that were pretty bright. I mean, they knew how to do things I didn't know how to do. I hired accountants and lawyers, and I was trying to figure out why I was earning so much money. I was using their brains to earn money. Do you know there's only a couple of things that we really want to understand? Life is about choices. It really is. Yet if you really want to enjoy your life, you do not have to sit back and keep going the way you're going. You just make a choice that you're going to change it. And it's about decisions. Let me ask you another question. Do you presently have an active strategy for creating multiple sources of passive income? Now, when I say passive income, I mean that's money that's coming, but you're not working. You say, well, how would you do that? Well, we'll teach you how to do that. See, most people don't know how to do that. They think the way to earn money is get up and go to work. It's like I've already mentioned, that's the worst way to earn money. Do you know there's two things that you have to know, just two things you have to know if you really want to become wealthy, do you know what they are? You have to know exactly where you are, and you have to know where you're going. Now, most people have an idea where they're going, but they spend all their time trying to figure out how it's going to happen. Ed Hillary did not know how he got to the top of Mount Everest until after he got there. The Wright brothers didn't know how to get into the air until after they got there. And you won't know how to achieve your goals until you get there. You'll have a plan, you'll have an idea. If it's so simple, why? to so many people stay stuck. Why do they stay stuck? Well, some of them will tell you it's because, you know, they haven't figured out the goal. That's not the problem. The problem is people don't know where they are. Now, when I talk about where they are, I'm not talking about geographically. I'm talking about what are your habits? How do you live? You know, what do you study? Who do you brainstorm with? What's really influencing the direction of your life? That's what I'm talking about. See, most people are not living the way they want to live. They're living the way they think other people think they should live. 
Oscar Wilde put it very well. He said, selfishness is not living as one wishes to live. He said, selfishness is asking others to live as one wishes to live. Why do we keep doing things that don't work? See, the problem is paradigms. We're literally programmed the way we live. We know better, but we're not doing it. John Ruskin said, education doesn't mean teaching people what they don't know. It means teaching people to behave as they do not behave. You want to really investigate the Chairman's Club and make sure you get into it, because it'll change your life like that. And we've got a system. First of all, we mastermind. We set up mastermind groups. And there's an acronym, MAP. And that's a monthly accountability program, where if you and I were in the same mastermind groups, I'm accountable to you, you may be accountable to me. And we sign a contract, and I say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to establish three new sources of income in the next 90 days. And I commit to do it. Now, we've got the opportunity. We can show you how to do it. We can connect you with people to do it. But you've got to be accountable to someone. Because you see, your paradigm is going to stop you or attempt to stop you from doing it. Napoleon Hill said, you know, before you ever start to make it, you've got to dream a lot. Almost everybody dreams and they visualize and they've got these wonderful dreams of how they're going to live. And they have the dreams for a long time. Most of them never turn them into action. We're going to show you how to turn those dreams into action. What we want you to do, we want you to build an image of yourself living the way you really want to live. Look at the image here of the little pussycat wanting to be the great big lion. Rawr. Well, I think we're all pussycats seeing ourselves as lions. There's something in us that wants to come out. We want to do it bigger. We want to do it better. If we were running, we'd want to run faster. If we're jumping, we want to jump higher. If we're selling, we want to sell more. If we're creating movies, we want an Academy Award. Doesn't matter what we want to do, we want to do it bigger. And that's because we're spiritual beings and spirits always for expansion and fuller expression. There's something in us that continually wants to express itself. Most people suppress it. I was suppressing it until I was 26. And then I was given a book. Books by Napoleon Hill. It's a phenomenal book. Let's take a look inside. He said something that I burned into my mind. He says there's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one is ready for a thing until they believe that they can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief and not mere hope or wish. Now, he goes on to say that open-mindedness is essential to belief. Closed minds will not inspire faith, courage, or belief. See, the average individual goes through life wishing for something, but they never get ready to receive it. Now, how do you get ready? You've got to believe it. You've got to believe that you can do it. Now, I want you to think of this. Our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, when we reevaluate the situation, our belief about that situation will change. What do you know about you? What do you know about yourself? I remember when I first started to study, the man that gave me the book, he said, who are you? I thought it was a dumb question. I said, I'm, I'm, what do you mean? I'm Bob. No, he said, you're not Bob. He said, Bob's your name. But that's not you. I'm not my name. Well, that makes sense. I said, well, this is me. No, he says, that's your body. You've never heard anyone phone into work and say, body's not coming in today. It's sick. Well, you see, that really got me thinking. And I started to study. And the more I studied, the more I became aware of who I was. Now, it took me nine years until the lights went on. I began to believe in me because I started to study me. Do you know that the electrical system in this physical thing we're living in would make the electrical system in a supercomputer look like a toy? Your central nervous system would blow your mind if you knew how it operated. Do you know that the blood in your body circulates through hundreds of miles of passageway? Every 33 seconds, it carries all the food in and all the garbage out in one sweeping change. Have you any idea what your brain is like? Your brain is an electronic switching station. You activate brain cells, you alter the vibratory rate of your body. Your body is a molecular structure. Do you know, if you saw the movie The Secret, we talked about the law of attraction in The Secret. The law of attraction is a secondary law. Most people don't understand it. The law of vibration is the primary law. You attract whatever you vibrate in harmony with. And you've got the ability to alter your vibration. Well, you see, as I started to understand this, I started to believe in me. And when I started to believe in me, I quit wishing for things and I started to do things. I'm going to give you something right now. I'm going to give you an idea. I want you to investigate this chairman's club. Investigate in depth. 
Because if you want to create your own economy, I'm going to tell you, this is where you can do it. Do you know, as a member of the Chairman's Club, you're going to learn about you. Napoleon Hill followed up that paragraph that I just shared with you with this. He said, remember, no more effort is required in order to aim high in life, to demand abundance and prosperity, than is required to accept misery and poverty. Let's imagine a person standing in a traffic light in any city, and a beautiful car vroom, pulls up. And they look at it and they think, wow, sure wished I could have that, but I couldn't have that. Do you know that someone else is using exactly the same mental faculty they were using, the same power flows through them that's thrown through to somebody else, and the other person's figuring out how to buy the whole dealership. Well, one person's thinking of why they can't buy a house, another person is building a subdivision. Yet it doesn't take any more energy for you to think of earning millions than it does to think of scraping by. I want you to use this particular vehicle that you're watching right now, this movie, as a starting point. Make a decision right here, right now, that your life is never going to be the same again. See, that's what I did a long time ago. Do you know that in this new economy, we can show you how to turn your annual income to a monthly income? Now, you may say, this guy is out of his mind. No, no, I'm really not. I've gained a reputation over the past 40 years that I'm not out of my mind. I really understand the mind. Dr. John Mike, a psychiatrist in Florida, said I taught him more about the mind in one year than he'd learned in four years of medical school, five years of psychiatric training. Do you know something? I can teach you what I taught him. And when you start to understand how your mind functions, you will definitely begin to create your own economy. And you will find it hard to turn your annual income to a monthly income. See, this can be accomplished by setting up multiple sources of income. Now, wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources of income. Think of that, multiple. I don't even know how many sources of income I've got. I don't have to know it. I've got somebody else looking after that. How many sources of income do you have? Do you know most people, they have one. If they have two, it's because they got a part-time job, or maybe they've squirreled a little bit away out of their pay and they got it working in some investment somewhere. You can have hundreds of them. Listen, I'm going to share something with you. I'm going to go through it fast, but I really want you to pay attention. There's only three income earning strategies. I refer to it as M1, M2, M3, money one, two, three. M1 is a strategy that is used by 96% of the population. It has an inherent problem. It doesn't work. It won't work. It never has worked, and it's not going to work. M1 is where you trade your time for money. But you see, you run out of time. Think about it. 96% of our population are trading their time for money. If they squirrel anything away and they're convinced that they should be saving their money, it's at the price of a life. They compromise in the car they drive, the house they live in, the vacations they take, the clothes they buy. They never live the way they want. M1 is a bad strategy. It's taught in school. Your parents probably taught it to you. It won't work. M2 is a good strategy, but it's only used by three people out of 100. M2 is where you invest money to earn money. It's obvious why there's only 3% of the population doing it. There's only 3% have any money to invest. And most of them don't know how to invest it. That's the crazy part. Now, M3 is the strategy I stumbled on when I was around 26, 27 years old. My income went right through the roof. M3 is a strategy that is used by 1% of the population, and they earn 96% of all the money that's being earned. It's so out of balance you say it can't be true. It is true. M3 is where you multiply your time by setting up multiple sources of income. Now, the Chairman's Club is a virtual organization where people from all over the world have sources of income, passive sources of income. As a matter of fact, we will show you immediately how to set up two or three. Now, these sources of income are registered with the Chairman's Club. You can go online 24-7 and you can say, hmm, this person started that, and you can phone the person, you can email the person, you can set up a joint venture with them. Now, you don't use them all. I mean, there's new ones posted every day. You're not going to use them all. There's some of them that you wouldn't want to do, but some of them you feel attracted to. They grow. Some don't grow, but they all have one thing in common. It all goes into your bank. Let the Chairman's Club be your starting point where everything begins to change for you just like Napoleon Hill's book was for me. You see, we can show you how to turn your annual income into a monthly income. That's an objective.
That's one of the first objectives that we have new members in the Chairman's Club do. Now you may say, well, how would you possibly do that? You multiply your time by setting up multiple sources of income. Wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources of income. You can go back as far as you want in history. Go right back to the ancient Babylonians. Every one of the wealthy people had multiple sources of income. They probably didn't even realize this. It was such a common way of life with them. And it was with me. I stumbled on this in the early 60s. I didn't even know what I was doing. I had tapped in to the secret for earning wealth that most people never in their whole life understand. You'll remember the young lady that opened this film, Tiffany Barron. She is very bright. You know, she's actually an electrical engineer. You'd wonder what the heck is an electrical engineer running a company like this for? Well, she came to our seminars and she started to realize that she was in a very confining situation. You see, they put her in a booth, they told her when to go to work, when she could go home, told her exactly how much she was going to earn, no more, no less. And she started to think, after all these years of studying, this isn't what I really want. And so, you see, she was in a state of dissatisfaction when she came to the seminars. And then she started to hear about this concept of multiple source of income. And she thought, hmm, sounds interesting, I think I'll try it. So she started to dabble in it. Well, pretty soon, she had this thing really flying. And she's broken this down now. She does a great job running this. She's broken it down into four different areas. And the first area, I think, is the most phenomenal. This is where we help you create your own massive, passive MSI business. We've projected ourselves ahead. You set up one new source of income. Then you set up another. Then you set up another. And pretty soon, you've got a whole stack of them massive. And they're passive. That means you earn money regardless of what you're doing. You could be playing golf, you got money coming in. You could be sleeping, you got money coming in. See, God gave us the ability to live the way we choose to live. In fact, J. Martin Coey wrote a book on it. He says, your greatest power is the power to choose. And then, because of the nature of our company, because we are global, we have people from all over the world. In the first year, we had people from 20 different countries. You're going to learn how to set up your own global joint venture team. You're going to have a team of people. No one ever did anything on their own. You need other people. And you need creative people. And you need people that want to cooperate. They need people that want help and want to give help. And that's what you do. And you pick the different ones. You just you seem to have a rapport with them. And so you join together. You will build a team, a powerful team. I've got people all over the world that are helping me and that I'm helping. Then the next one, we're going to show you, if you come up with an idea, now not everybody does this, but some people come up with ideas where you can license the idea. I have a company that we license. In fact, I have a couple of them. I have another one we franchise. But we license this and we take our idea and a person from another country, we've got people in the Nordic countries over in uh, Copenhagen, Sweden, they have licensed our company, they pay us a nice upfront fee for the license, and then they pay us a royalty, and then we work with them. That's how companies expand and become very big. And last but not least, we're always looking for that pearl. We're looking for that jewel. We call that one single multi-million dollar idea. Like that, you can execute. And we got a couple going, and we'll share them with you when you get in there. Now, I work very closely with different people. I don't have a lot of employees. I have a lot of partners. And these partners are people that are really bright. They're very into what we're doing. They're joint ventures. And that's what we recommend you do. You met one of them at the beginning of this film. I'm just about to introduce you to another one. There's a lady, Sandy Gallagher. She's absolutely brilliant, a top lawyer, does bank acquisitions in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And she got bitten by the bug that we're bitten by. And she has used these ideas to make things happen in her life. I want you to think about everything I've talked to you about. And I want you to listen carefully as Sandy explains how this has impacted her life. And then, I want you to contact us. You've attracted this message into your life. It isn't by accident you got this. Nothing in this universe happens by accident. It would be an absolute shame for you just to set it aside and ignore it. Don't do that. Make a decision right now. And it doesn't matter if you know how you're going to do it. What matters is that you know you're going to do it. Listen very carefully to what my business partner, she's the CEO of our Life Success Corporate Organization 
has to say about what I just talked to you about and what you can do. Wouldn't you like to do what Bob talks about? Have more time and money and freedom? I mean, create your own economy. What Bob just explained, it's so real and it's liberating. These ideas, really, when you understand them and you apply them intelligently, they have the power to dramatically improve your life. And not just your income, but every aspect of your life. That's what they've done for me. You know, Bob is so right. We don't teach this in school. I've had plenty of formal education. I mean, I learned to think in law school. I mean, I've used my mind over the last 20 years putting multi-million dollar deals together. But I didn't learn to think this way. You know, Bob mentioned that I'm one of the highest paid attorneys in the country. But my pay as an attorney pales in comparison to what I've achieved from these ideas. And it's rolled over into every aspect of my life. I think back to when I just got out of law school and I was practicing on Wall Street. And I can see it right now. I'm standing around with all my colleagues. And these guys, I mean, they're top of their class at Harvard and Yale. And we're sitting around talking about how much we don't like what we're doing. And we're talking about what, we're, what we dream of, what we really want to do. And then we all say, but we don't have any choices. This is all we can do. I mean, that's crazy because the truth is we have choices. We have so many options. We can make the amount of money we want to make. We can do with our lives what we want to do. We can create the life that we want and create our own economy. If that's what you want, go to our website, bobproctormoney.com and learn more about the Chairman's Club. Make a decision to create your own economy. You know, Napoleon Hill says this of the key to success. He said, there's no penalty for using the key, but there is a price for not using it. And that price is failure. But the reward is of stupendous proportions for those who conquer self and let life give you what you want. We can show you how to do just that. Go to our website, bobproctormoney.com. Make the decision. Create your own economy.